everyone, Daniel Vadnall here for Fitness FAQs with my fellow physiotherapy colleague, Simon. He's gonna teach us how to human flag. Simon, technique wise, what should we be doing? Let's get into it. So today we're focusing on the horizontal flag. So the isometric hold, there's a lot more that can be done with the flag. You can do the flag essentially through a 360 degree range of motion. Today we're focusing on the isometric. Um, you can do the flag on a horizontal, on two horizontal bars, as we're going to do it today, or on a vertical pole. Generally, I find it easier to learn on horizontal bars because with this grip, you can balance yourself side to side. Okay, so it, it puts your hands in a little bit more of a comfortable position than you would be on a, on a vertical pole. Makes sense, yep. So we'll start with the hands and we'll move through all the joints and talk about the technique. So you can do the flag with the hands at varying widths. You can do it quite wide, you can do it quite close. Um, but quite close is very challenging to do. So I generally recommend you want to choose a grip that is wide and comfortable without your head touching the, the pole. Right. So this would be too wide. That might be a good, a good width to do the flag at. So you want to give, give that a shot? Just sure, why not? So if I was doing it here, as you were saying, that's probably a bit too narrow. Yep. Too extreme. And that looks pretty good. You've got some distance between your head and the pole. When we do this on the stall bars or the two horizontal bars, you're gonna have your hands together like this and make them wide. So both palms face each other. Okay. To hold the body in the horizontal position, you wanna be pushing with one arm and pulling with the other arm. So this is quite unique in that every other calisthenics skill, the planche, the muscle up, the front lever, the back lever, you're doing the same action with both hands. The flag is quite unique in that you need to coordinate a pulling movement with the top arm and a pushing movement with the bottom arm to hold yourself horizontal. Can you show me on this setup here? Yeah, absolutely. So to hold the body in a horizontal position, you're going to pull with the top arm or generate an adduction force. So trying to pull the arm down to your side. With the bottom arm, we want to abduct or push the arm out to the side to hold the body in a horizontal position. So the way I recommend you do that um, for the flag is keep your arms straight, elbows should be straight, pull the top arm as short as possible, push the bottom arm as tall as possible in an attempt to lift your feet off the floor. Okay, perfect. Yep, moving, um, moving down the chain. So we've spoken about hand position, we've spoken about the elbows, both arms straight, and we've spoken about what to do with the arms. With the shoulder blades, to make the shoulder blades conform to the correct position, you want to just pull the top arm as short as possible or try and make the top arm short, push the bottom arm tall, okay? That will naturally happen as you're doing the abduction force with the bottom arm and the adduction force with the top arm. Yeah. Head should be in a neutral position. Body should be sideways like a flag. Makes yep. sense, yeah. So you can sometimes turn your body to face the ceiling or turn your body to face the floor. That will naturally happen with the inverted and upright positions to keep your shoulders in a nice, healthy, comfortable position. But when we're at horizontal, we want the body to be sideways to resemble a flag. Yep. We want the body to be in a straight line. Another common mistake that's often not picked up as much is arching the back, okay? So even though you can keep a horizontal position like this, we want everything to be in a straight line. Like this, flip 90 degrees. To hold, hold the body up, it's not only an abduction force from the bottom arm, so all the pushing muscles, the planche muscles that we're using, an adduction force from the top arm, so the pulling muscles, the same muscles that we use in a pull-up, but it's also the lateral core. So it's the QL, it's your glute med holding your top leg up, and it's your adductors holding the bottom leg up. So if you see someone that is straight arm, straight arm, but they're having a lateral flexion, is yep. that a sign that they're maybe missing that core component? Yeah, so that can be two things. That can be them trying to reduce the lever arm because their arms aren't strong enough. So sometimes you can arch your back in the, in the back lever because you don't actually have the shoulder strength. Um, or it could just be an isolated impairment in their lateral core. So they could address that with some lateral core exercises, things like side leg raises, things like the flag plank, which I'll be taking you through today. Perfect. All right, so the first exercise we're gonna do is the 45 degree flag. So this is a flag at a reduced intensity because you're not horizontal, you're on a 45 degree angle. So to do this, we're gonna start 
with the top arm on the horizontal bar, about arm's length from the vertical beam. So this will help you learn to push and pull simultaneously. So Dan's hanging there. What he's gonna do is pull this arm as short as possible. So a combination of retraction and depression of this shoulder. And he's gonna push this arm as tall as possible or as long as possible to put his body on a 45 degree angle. So here, Dan's in a straight line from his head all the way to his toes. Both arms are, are straight and he's trying to push and pull as much as possible. Challenging? Can feel it, especially yeah. when you're, as you said, trying to do that end range uh, pull with the top arm and push with the bottom arm. Yeah. Um, so we wanna get to a 45 degree angle. If this is too challenging, you can do this as a dynamic exercise, just lifting out to the side and lowering back down. As you build strength, hold the position at the top for a couple of seconds until you can maintain holds of about 10 to 20 seconds. 15 seconds is a nice sweet spot between those. How do people find their perfect setup with the hand placement? Yeah, so if you move too far away from the vertical beam, you're gonna be biasing the top arm. So the top arm's gonna do pretty much everything. So we'll make it a very extreme example of that. If you wanna put your top arm quite far away. Oh uh, yeah, let's do we'll this. Put it here. All right, why not? And you'll see, that, Oi, yeah. see where that bottom arm essentially can't do anything. Yeah. <laughs> yep, so you're doing everything there with the top arm. If you come too close to the bar, you're gonna be doing more work with the bottom arm. So that bottom arm really has to push to get you on a 45 degree angle. Yep. What you wanna do in the flag is distribute the work evenly between both arms. So it takes a little bit of trial and error. You wanna find the sweet spot where you feel like your top arm is working just as much as your bottom arm. All right, Simon, I'm feeling pretty good with that 45 degree flag. What do you recommend? Otherwise. So next we're going to do the flag plank. So these two exercises are interchangeable. It doesn't really matter which one you do first because the flag plank can be scaled up or down to be really challenging or actually quite easy. It's analogous to the planche lean or the pseudo planche. You can do a pseudo planche which is as easy as a push up or you can make it harder than a straddle planche. So it's very similar with this. Um, so this is going to give you a feel of what the flag is like with your feet on the ground. Now, if you generate enough force with this exercise, your feet are actually gonna lift off the ground. So to show you what it looks like, I really like to set up at the edge of the stall bars so you can be confident that your top arm is directly above your bottom arm. Um, it, sounds, it sounds simple, but quite often you'll miss that when you're trying it in the middle of stall bars. So that's a really good cue to help find the right position. So from here, you wanna sit in a flag position with your feet on the floor, pushing with the bottom arm, pulling with the top arm. And with enough force, you'll lift into a flag. So what you want to intend with this exercise is being as light as possible on the feet. Unfortunately, it's not very objective. It's difficult to measure without scales under your feet. So approach it with intensity to try to lift up. You can even try to kick off a little bit off the ground. So we're gonna do holds of 10 to 20 seconds again. 15 seconds is a sweet spot. Ready to give it a shot? Sure, why not? So as per Simon's expert guidance, this uh, right flush with the rack. So Great. pushing, pulling. Yep, hips down a tiny bit. Oh yeah, you're off the ground. There you go, there's a flag. <laughs> yeah, so you're gonna, do that with as much intensity as possible for about 15 seconds, all right? And once again, I really encourage you to film this because often the position you think you're in and the position you're actually in are different. Your hips might be a little bit high, they might be a little bit too low. Filming it, you get feedback to get that nice, perfect straight line. One extra point I'll add, um, this can be a bit of an uncomfortable position if your feet are too low, if your body is angled too much of an angle as opposed to horizontal. So one extra thing you can do to make this better mimic the flag is elevate your feet on something like yoga blocks or a bench to put the body in a horizontal position. All right, so do you want to do the flag plank position without the bench first? Great, so bring your feet forward slightly. Perfect, so he's pushing and pulling and as you can see, Dan's on an angle. So if we plop Dan's bottom foot on the bench, Perfect, he's gonna push and pull, keep his body 
sideways as opposed to pointing towards the ceiling or the ground and try and be as light on the feet as possible. Great. Now, as a, um, as a variation of this exercise, you can do it with the legs straddled. So instead of placing your foot up on a bench, you can straddle your legs. It will reduce the intensity at the arms a little bit, but it will add a little bit more of a balance component to stop the body tipping from side to side. This also allows you to get a feel of the straddle flag, which is a regression to the full flag. So you'll be doing that first as you approach the full flag um, in the unsupported position. Perfect, so what straddling the legs is gonna do, it's gonna increase the demand on the hip abductors, and it's also gonna add a little bit of a balance component. So there Dan's doing it dynamically. Perfect. All right, so this exercise is the kick to flag. So we're gonna be kicking to the flag position and trying to control the descent against gravity back to the upright position, repeating that process. As you get stronger, you can hold the flag position momentarily, one to two seconds before controlling the descent. You can do this in the straddle position to reduce the intensity or in the full position to increase the intensity. Perfect. So you're gonna start with your foot on the bench, feet on the bench, and you're gonna be gripping both poles in the flag position. Great. You wanna start this facing your hands. And the reason for that is it's gonna put your shoulders in a much more comfortable position. So if you face me, Dan's shoulders are in very natural positions. If he rotates his body 90 degrees to the sideways flag, when his body's upright, it's not a very good position for his shoulders. This arm's extremely rotated, externally rotated. The other arm is very abducted over the top. Okay, so you can kind of hang on your joints there without much strength, but it's quite a compromising position. If you have any sort of shoulder pathology or injury, it's gonna be um, not a good day. Yes. Yeah. So you're going to start facing the bars, you're going to change your, the plane of your body to that sideways position as you kick to horizontal, and you're gonna to try to control the descent. To start with, let's just get to the flag and come down. Use a straddle position for a reduced intensity. That's it, and come down. So that was a lot of strength. Feel free to use momentum, use your legs a little bit more just to get to that position to get a feel of it. Great, and come down. Great, perfect. Yeah, so you can even use less strength than that. Kick up, get to the position, come down. As you become more familiar with the movement, with the exercise, try to use your arms a little bit more to hold that flag and control the descent at a slower pace against gravity. So as you said, playing around with different things like straddle, then you can go to the full position to pull out, reducing momentum, adding an isometric pause, and just dominating the eccentric uh, different ways to progress, exactly, right? Exactly, yep. And as you control that eccentric, remember to change the plane of your body from sideways to facing the bars so your shoulders stay in nice natural positions. Perfect, that sounds good. Great. Okay, so the last exercise we're doing before we're doing the full flag is the band assisted flag. So we've built some strength and control with the previous exercises. We've become familiar with this unique motor pattern of pushing and pulling with one arm. Now we get to do the flag in an assisted manner with assistance from a band. I really like using bands for assistance because they provide an objective, consistent amount of assistance each time you do it. Much better than a spot where you might give me a little bit more help one session and a little bit less the next session. So the way we set up for this is with a band anchored overhead, it's much easier on stall bars, you don't have to anchor it so high. Um, today we're gonna make use of what we've got. So a band anchored overhead, once again, I like to use the edge of the stall bar so you know everything is stacked directly on top of each other. Your hands and the band are in the same plane. Go for it, Simon. Pull the band down. We're gonna put one foot in the band and ensure that this foot is on the outside of your hand so you don't get tangled. Yep. From here, I slowly lift this leg up to a straddle position and the band is gonna assist me to the straddle flag. When I'm comfortable holding the straddle flag, reduce the intensity of the band until you can hold it without assistance. Then you can bring your feet together and do the same thing. Awesome. Great, thank you. <laughs> you wanna give it a shot? Sure. All right. So,
Great, straighten that leg. Let's try and make this look as effortless as Simon. I doubt it, but here we go. <laughs> There we go, great. Can you bring your hips up a little bit? Oh, am I doing it? <laughs> There's a band assisted flag. You can obviously reduce the thickness of the band to reduce how much assistance you receive as you progress toward the full flag. You can do the straddle flag unassisted and then use the same process to work toward the full flag unassisted with bands. I really like that because it's teaching everything, the pull, the push, the body position and it's at a reduced intensity where I can actually get something out of it. If I tried to do that unassisted, I probably wouldn't be able to hold it for the time that you recommend. So this is great for me and other beginners too. Yeah, it allows you to become familiar with the flag, spend some time in that position rather than trying one or two second holds and burning out after a couple of sets. Now the flag is a bit unique because you can't progress in the same manner that you do for the front lever, the back lever, the planche by just extending the lever arm with tuck, advanced tuck, single leg or straddle and full. And the reason for that is in the flag, if I come around this side, in the flag, we want the body to be sideways like so, sticking out from the, the bars. If I tuck the legs, this changes the, the plane that my body's in and adds a rotational force this way that I have to control, which can be quite awkward. To combat that, you either need to turn your body to face the ceiling, which isn't quite like this horizontal flag that we're training. So for that reason, I tend to progress with the exercises that I've shown you and use the straddle. You can also use the diamond shape to reduce that lever arm a little bit more um, and the full position as the final progression. Perfect, I could see how that would make it a completely different exercise and the regressions and other techniques will be more than good enough for everyone. Yeah. There's obviously a lot more you can do with the flag. So you can do raises up and down. You can do human flag pull-ups and push-ups. You can do 360 flags. But using the exercises that we've gone through today provides an effective method to unlock the isometric horizontal flag. So programming for the human flag is quite unique because you've got both pushing and pulling components. So it's difficult to incorporate this into a push-pull split. One simple, effective method is to perform three flag sessions per week with 48 hours between sessions for muscle recovery. Do these four exercises on each side for three sets. And for the dynamic exercises, perform between five and 10 repetitions. For the static holds, between 10 and 20 second holds. Start with your most challenging exercises, regress to the easier ones. All right, everyone, that's the complete human flag tutorial featuring Simon Star. Go ahead and check out his stuff. Absolute legend in the calisthenics game. Simon, as always, man, thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. See you soon.